Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I don't know if this is a sneak peek or not. I don't know if I've uploaded the other video or not yet. Uh, but I wanted to show you guys something. Um, kind of just run through it real quick. Uh, this is my homemade uh, mechanical three-phase uh, speed controller for a three-phase motor that's wired in star. Um, if you don't know what that means, uh, this is an electronic speed controller that goes to this three-phase motor that's wired in star. This is a servo motor, a uh, permanent magnet motor. Uh, I, I don't remember if this one's 12 pole or, or what, but anyways, uh, this is a lot of circuitry. There, there really is. It's got uh, logic, um, which just means it's got a uh, microchip in it, uh, some 555 timers and stuff. It's, it's a very complicated circuit. Uh, you've got to hook a potentiometer up to it or a controller up to it. Um, <laughs> it's very complicated. It, it, what it does is it fires a sequence and for one revolution it would be positive, negative, empty, and then positive, negative, empty, and then positive, negative, you know, it just keeps going positive, negative, empty, positive, negative, empty, po just keeps oscillating around in that circle because on a three phase motor, you've got one end of the wire tied together, you've got three coils that come off of this motor, and those are your three inputs right here. You've got one input, two inputs, three inputs for this motor. That's how this works. So you would feed positive, negative here, and then the other wire would nothing, and then positive, negative, and then uh, nothing, and then positive, negative, and it would keep going that way uh, to make the motor turn that way, and uh, that would be your electronic speed controller. This I made, um, it does the same thing except it's a mechanical speed controller. Here's your input. Uh, you got your positive and negative and then nothing here which actually this this will actually put an output uh, from the feedback out of your motor uh, because everyone knows that when you cross a coil and another coil that's open next to it uh, you will transfer energy from this coil to that coil dielectrically. Everyone knows that. Uh, well, not everyone, but anyways, you've got your input here, you've got your oscillator, because these contact points touch each other exactly at the same time, all three of them, as it goes around, and they connect here, and then here's the three terminals for your output. I don't know if anyone's ever built anything like this or not, uh, I'm missing a rubber band from here to here and however fast this turns this right here which it, it turns so easy it really does uh, it, it just barely touches these wires as it goes around you know but they touch at the same time so it would be positive negative and then it goes to the next one positive negative goes to the next one positive negative you know and, and it circles around and your output would be whatever your, your input. So if you put 190 volts input here, I mean, a ton of wattage, you know, a couple thousand watts, this thing can handle that. And however fast you turn this motor is how fast your three phase motor output, it's how fast your motor would be going. So, uh, hope this helps some, some of you out there to understand that a little bit better. But anyways, this video is for a friend in Oklahoma. Um, he's needing a power supply and controller for his uh, direct current permanent magnet motor. Uh, this is this one came out of a treadmill. It's, uh, let's see here, 3000 RPM, uh, 90 volts DC. It's 15.8 uh, foot-pounds of torque and it's yeah, it's rated for 50 amps 
Uh, let's see here. Max ambient temperatures. Uh, yeah. Anyways, so that's most of everything off of the motor here. Um, I'll give you a little shot of it. That way you can look it up if you want to uh, on your own. 15 minute duty cycle. Uh, nothing else really there. Um, so the circuit's very simple. Um, I've got a power cord here uh, that just goes down. Uh, it's so hard for me to do this sometimes. All right, sorry, I've got my voltage meter here set to uh, amps up to 200. Uh, I've got that on my mains going in. My input here, uh, let me check that real quick. This is very dangerous. It's is extremely dangerous. Doesn't matter if it's direct current or not. Uh, this little bitty circuit that I made here and I ran it in parallel, I've got two. Uh, bridge rectifiers, full wave bridge rectifiers right here uh, and I wired them both in parallel so the positive of this one's hooked up to the positive of this one, the negative of this one's hooked up to the negative of this one and also goes out uh, to the motor on both the uh, positive and negative let's see we get a good shot right here we've got the negative DC you've got the alternate current inputs um, and it doesn't matter which one of these goes where because it just alternates in there uh, It picks it up anyways, and then you got your positive output So this is direct current Positive this is direct current negative this other brown wire Direct current negative direct current positive Okay, which you can see uh, Negative is the fourth terminal or the one all the way on this left side you got your AC on those two and then your positive so over here it's the exact same uh, I flipped it over uh, here's the positive output the negative output coming out of the bridge rectifier and then here's the input uh, just wired it exactly the same as here okay now I've got that coming up to uh, my output which is direct current at 153 volts um, there's not a whole lot of capacitance in it um, I mean there's plenty of power but not enough capacitance uh, for a good jump start to get this thing going real quick uh, so I added uh, this capacitor here it's just a run start capacitor Let's see is it yeah it's uh, maximum continuous of 6.8 amps doesn't say your voltage let's see here and I don't see oh there we go RC 0 4 1 0 quarter by one third uh, one quarter to one third horsepower and 120 volts so this I'm using uh, to smooth out the signal and keep the uh, top of the uh, peak to peak I wish I had an oscilloscope, oscilloscope so I could show you guys but I don't and I don't have any more spare TVs so I can't build one right now but uh, anyways I want to share this with everyone because uh, hang on I'm going to plug this thing in and uh, you're going to get the real numbers real quick. Alright. Now, I do not have my motor hooked up. Um, here's the positive and negative for the motor. Uh, that's going to be the input to the motor. And here is the output coming off of, well, right now it's AC right here. We go through the full rate, full wave uh, bridge rectifier that there's two of them and they're ran parallel uh, uh, this one was six amps and or this one was nine amps and this one was six amps or something like that I just put them both down there and ran them parallel 
didn't have any problems out of it. Gave me 153 volts. I ran that into the capacitor here. Uh, got negative on the left side of the terminal and positive on the right side of the terminal. Um, and this is going to hold my capacitance here. Uh, so, without further ado, ah, we got. Uh, go ahead and plug this. And like I said, it doesn't matter, uh, positive or negative, on whichever side. Uh, we'll plug that in. And we'll switch this over to uh, direct current. And we'll just uh, get a little measurement here of the voltage. I believe it was 153. Well, right there. So, in uh, 146 volts. Uh, and that is on direct current. Alright, we'll go to amperage. Now, you gotta be very careful because this thing's plugged in, and even if, even if you unplug this, and even though this is direct current, it will get you. So, you've got to be very careful with this. You notice it is unplugged now, but that doesn't matter. I'm surprised it didn't spark more than once. Yeah. This is high voltage. High voltage DC will kill you just as fast as high voltage AC. Uh, just a word to the wise, you know. Don't try this at home if, if you're not experienced, don't know what you're doing. And I take uh, no responsibility for anyone getting hurt. Uh, especially if I tell you to not try this at home. Uh, a lot of the things that I do are not safe. What I just did was not safe. I should have taken these lineman pliers and arced them across there. That would have been safe to discharge this capacitor so that I could wire it up to this motor. Okay, I am going to go ahead and show you the amperage reading. Uh, on this motor, the consumption, I'm going to use these lineman pliers and uh, put a good load on this motor and you'll get the amperage reading. Uh, I think you guys are going to be a little impressed with some uh, scrapped TV parts here. So, uh, go ahead and wire that back in. It is live. I've got this on our mains. Getting a amperage reading. Um, and, uh, well, you know what? I'll go ahead and show you this. Uh, what's the easiest way to wire a motor? How about by welding it? There we go. Well, we got 7 amps, 7.4, 6 amps, 5, 4, 3 amps, definitely gaining speed, 2.5, 2 2.3, 2, 2.1, 2 2.6, 2 down to 1 amp, almost up to full speed, 1.6. One point five. Now I'm here to tell you, I honestly believe I don't have a uh, RPM gauge, uh, and I don't have no way of putting that on there. Uh, it's one point three amps. I will tell you, this thing has got some power to it. Now it was rated for fifteen amps running at 90 volts. 
I up the voltage a little bit. The amp drops to almost nothing. Now with the load on it, you are gonna double your amperage. I know this for a fact because, well, you can look at my pliers and I stick it in here and uh, wedge it down. So I'm putting a brake on here because just holding against it, just holding against it won't do anything. Now I can pry it in there and that's completely different. Well, a little bit of sparks going. And that's about all I can do. I'm burning my pliers. Uh, okay. So what I think I got it? Yeah. Dang it. I'm gonna have to quit doing that. I'm tearing up nothing. So with about the strongest load I can put on it. I think we got up to 5.5 amps. Now this, like, like I said and like I showed you on the motor, in order for this thing to run like this, it needs 15 amps. And as you can see, I didn't put 15 amps to this. I'm running 1.3 amps right now. Once it warms up, it'll go under one amp. One amp, let's check the uh, DC voltage here after the drop, see what we got. Well, if I can hold it steady. All right. Down to 109 volts. Direct current. And we are, see, 109 volts at 1.2. 109 volts. 4.3, 1.2. I say uh, 100 volts at 1 amp would be 100 watts. So 110 volts, we're using roughly 130, I think about 130 watts to run this motor right here, full speed. Now, do I need all of this circuitry right here to run that motor? I don't think I do. See what I'm saying, guys? It's, I mean, yeah, I've got these all these transistors over here. Um, this thing cooks through a bunch of wattage when all this is hooked up. It's got this huge resistor on there. You know, fighting this huge resistor here, fighting the current. I mean, you know, you've got to have some loss there. It looks like a good circuit. You know, it's it's very tunable, but it's not. Uh, oh my goodness, it's not practical. That's the problem. Yeah, we're. Uh, uh, stand up. Okay. Yeah, we're at 1.3, 1.2, 1 1.3 amps. And that's our alternate current consumption. That's the equivalent of the cheapest power inverter you can buy. Basically. 100 watts. So, if you learned anything from the video, give me a like. I deserve at least that. And uh, if you have a little extra, you can definitely some use a little bit of support on the channel. Now, let me show you something else. There's no amperage consumption because I unhooked it from the motor. Now, as I told you before, 
permanent magnet motors are also permanent magnet generators. If I can get these terminals on here before the motor stops, I'll show you that. There we go. I got it. No, I don't. I'm scared to touch it. But, I will do this. See that spark? Two wires coming out of the motor. Whoa! <laughs> Even at very low RPM, still sparking. Up until it almost stops, it's still producing. And, uh, oh, it produces, uh, what's it? I think it was like 170 volts DC. So it's, it would be a ton of amperage, you know, if you jump this off with the capacitance, use a couple of resistors, you know, uh, or even, you know, with a, maybe a, a nine bridge uh, rectifier, nine way bridge rectifier or whatever, you know, something like that maybe, uh, you can wire into it and use the output for the input. Uh, which that wouldn't work. Anyways, uh, what I did want to tell y'all is you write down all the equations from what I just got and you look up what it takes to power that 10,000 watt generator head right there. You ask yourself, well, the foot-pounds of torque ain't there. Well, okay. It's 15.8 foot-pounds of torque. You saw me put a load on it. I mean, that's about all I could get, and that brought it up to 5.5 .5 amps. You know, uh, if there, if I don't have something here, then you know, I mean, what? I don't understand what you want. I'm trying to give it to you, and well, here it is. So, this is a direct current permanent magnet motor. This is also a permanent magnet motor. Uh, it uses RF signals, uh, which are, it is kind of direct current, but it's like a direct current uh, radio frequency. It's, it's not a, a direct current polarized battery. It's, you know, it's way more than that. And that's also what I wanted to get at with this. Uh, this will work this servo motor. It will work that motor. All I need for it is a rubber band so I'll have a belt going from my motor to my shaft. Right there where I put the black tape. Nice and simple. Mechanical speed controller. Very simple, very effective. Full wave bridge rectifier. Uh, I gave you the readouts for everything. Showed you the amperage uh, consumption, the voltage consumption. Uh, I think we went from 145, or uh, I think it was maybe 153 volts uh, down to 110 volts. So we used about, we dropped about 40 volts to gain the torque that we needed. Uh, let's see. And that was from start to start to run. We lost, you know, that's that was voltage. Um, what else I got for you? Oh, I don't know. Hell, throw me a bone. I really need it. I could really use some support right now. You know, if if all my subscribers bought me a cup of coffee just one time ever. I would never have to ask ever again. Ever. But anyways, this money ain't about her. Ah, this video isn't about begging. It's about teaching. And always be very careful. Uh, whether it's plugged in or not, um, it's still deadly. Uh, and of course, this one's still plugged in. So, let's go ahead and unplug that. 
and we're going to get safe with this lineman pliers and discharge this capacitor. Ah, oh, that gets me. Bet I can get a second spark. Nope. Okay. Yeah, most of the time it it'll give it a second spark. I don't know if that's the wave coming back to the capacitor. I don't know. Anyways, yeah. Nice little look at the circuit real quick again. Brown is negative direct current. The blue and yellow is alternating current that's plugged in to, uh, well, this uh, plug-in. <laughs> it's plugged into the plug-in. And uh, let's see, that is a RS-606 uh, full-wave bridge rectifier. And I've got it on this uh, piece of aluminum here. And that keeps it from getting warm. Oh, and it's not warm or nothing. None of these wires are even warm. Uh, what well, we ran that for about five minutes or so, maybe seven minutes. None of it got warm. Yep. All right. So, uh, well, on your way out, don't forget to hit the like button. Y'all have a good night. I'll see if I can get my back straightened up. <sighs> That works most of the time. So, alrighty, gotta go to bed. It's so late.